So now we're into thermochemistry, and uh, what you need to know about thermochemistry is, first of all, it's not that hard. Um, it has only a few topics that we're actually going to cover, and in college, thermochemistry is actually part of a smaller, I'm sorry, part of a larger topic called thermodynamics. We will touch upon the very basics of thermodynamics t in this uh, unit, but understand that in college, thermodynamics is an entire semester-long course, so we will barely scratch the surface here. So let's t first talk about a couple of definitions. One, what is thermochemistry? Thermochemistry is processes that involve the movement of heat energy. So up until now, we've just looked at, okay, does this thing react? Does that thing react? How do they switch? What are the new chemicals that are being created from the process? But we've never actually looked at any energy transfer. So now we're going to look at two types of energy transfer. We're going to look at ones that involve chemical reactions and one that are just things that are heating up and things that are cooling down. So, but understand that thermochemistry does not mean fire. I know a lot of you are thinking right now, oh yes, things are going to catch on fire. No, no fire. Okay. Uh, now, a couple things you need to know. Frame of reference. This is, a, this is not a, a pure definition. I will never test you on it. But what happens is we need to look at the direction of heat flow. And so we have to be referring back to where are we looking? Where is the observer when we're looking at this overall process? Is the observer part of the system or part, what's called part of the surroundings? Meaning, are you in the process or are you outside of the process? And I'll talk about this more closely when I, uh, when I get into the actual heat transfer. Okay, now we're going to get into two processes that you have touched that we have touched upon before in other things. You saw when you did the heating and cooling curve. The first one is endothermic. Endothermic is a process where the substance absorbs heat. Okay, best example is ice melting. Okay, now if you think about ice melting, heat has to go into the ice cube in order to break those or weaken those intermolecular forces that are keeping the thing as a solid. So heat is being transferred from your hand into the ice cube, okay? So the ice cube is endothermic because heat is entering, get it? Endo, enter, okay? So the substance absorbs heat because it's, heat is entering the substance. The other thing you can think of is think cold. Any process that thinks, that feels cold to you, you know, touching snow, touching a cold piece of metal, etc. if they feel cold, that means it's an endothermic process. Heat is leaving you to go into the other substance. The other one you've talked about before is exothermic. And exothermic is where substance releases heat. For The best example is fire. Now, I know thermochemistry is not always fire, but sometimes it can be. Okay? Fire releases heat. Anyone who has ever stood next to something on fire knows that it releases heat. We are feeling that heat coming out of the substance, exiting the substance. Exothermic exit heat. Okay? So, um, so those processes would be exothermic. Again, when endothermic felt cold, exothermic feels hot. Okay, so think hot when you're dealing with exothermic reactions. Now these are the four major definitions that you're going to need to know. Like I said, frame of reference, I'm not going to talk about that much, but I will refer back to it as we look at whether or not something is endothermic or whether or not something is exothermic.